Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for attending our Optics Live series webinar. Today, we will focus on Optical Cross Connect OXC. This is Hebe, the moderator today. I'm the communication specialist of Huawei Transmission and Access Network Product Line. Before we start, I'd like to remind you that you will receive the follow up email after the webinar. And if you need more resources, please feel free to let us know. If you have any questions during the webinar, please leave them in the question box. We will reply them at the end of the webinar or send answers to your registration email. First of all, let's welcome today's speakers. They are Mr. Zhao Minghan, Senior Architect of China Telecom's Trend Transmission Department. Mr. Jose Manuel Silver, Chief Technology Manager, WDM of Te Telefonica Span. Mr. Zhong Feng, Chief Architect of Huawei Optical Cross Connect. Okay, let's start now. Hello, John, are you there? Yeah, I'm Could here. Could you please start now? Okay. So it's very glad. Uh, it's very glad uh, for me to uh, introduce the Huawei Oxy technology and the corresponding product to the uh, audience. So here, uh, here follows the uh, presentation today. So first about the market trends and challenges, and then some key technologies and values of the Oxy, and uh, then uh, kids sharing from our customer. Then uh, our view on the uh, following. Uh, um, ages about the Oxy and the conclusion. So I, th I think uh, as we all know that uh, from uh, uh, 1980s to now almost uh, every 10 years the whole society will uh, upgrade to a, a higher level. So that means from the voice ages to the uh, video ages and for the uh, nowadays like AR VR ages. So this kind of a uh, uh, various applications to drive the whole network uh, bandwidth and uh, like a latency and to uh, I mean that to upgrade in the uh, 10 times uh, magnitude uh, for 10 times so uh, about the uh, WDM network so we all know that um, because of the huge uh, bandwidth requirement so it's driving the uh, formal uh, like a mesh network, mesh, mesh backbone network into the, we call it a 3D meshed uh, backbone network. That means because uh, of the uh, imbalanced or uh, heterogeneous uh, traffic, so some, some link will be, uh, as you can see here, uh, be, uh, be, we, call, we call it the whole link. So we need to uh, reconstruct the whole network into a, a 3D. So that means to release the uh, pressure about the uh, bandwidth on some specific links. Uh, meantime, uh, with the video and the 5G service uh, comes, uh, comes to our, uh, our life, so we were driving, the, the whole network was driving the OTN to the uh, central office. And that means the whole network will be flattened from the uh, uh, formal like uh, five layers to uh, three or two layers. So that means uh, the lambda will and can 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 be from the central office directly to the uh, core network. So that driving the uh, no degree of the core network to be uh, increased dramatically. So we here we show that um, uh, uh, more than two times, four times, and even eight times increase. And third, that uh, the uh, data data center in, uh, collection requires the high reliability and the low latency collection, and also driven the whole network to uh, become the uh, full mesh network. So this also driven the uh, a node degree uh, to increase dramatically. So all these uh, matters and uh, driven the whole, whole network and the, the nodes, the degree of the core nodes to uh, increase dramatically. So um, if we uh, look, look back to the uh, history, we will see that the uh, site capacity is growing exponentially. So we will see that uh, uh, in the uh, uh, coming two or three years, the capacity of the site will uh, more than like 400 terabit. 
or even to one uh, pamphlet. So this is uh, really uh, um, give some uh, impress to the network. And uh, if we look at the uh, node degree, and uh, from uh, the view of uh, statics, uh, statistics, we will say that the, the, the main degree of the whole network is generally six to eight, but uh, some core node of, of on the on the backbone or on the uh, core network will up to like twenty or even uh, thirty degrees, uh, especially for the full mesh network. So uh, that means we need some kind of a, a new uh, uh, new way to think about the how we uh, to make uh, optical networking. So we also. Uh, learn something from the history. So maybe uh, 20, 20 years ago, so the, the WDM network used the uh, AWG-based AWG uh, technology, but which is uh, only can uh, connect one or two degree, but by manually. And then the wavelength selective uh, switch technology was coming, but this is um, uh, somehow to change the whole network to the uh, we call it semi-automatic because of the in the night side it is automatic but in the at drop side it is not uh, so uh, flexible. What I mean that uh, you will see that because uh, we use AWG so all the ports is uh, is colored and also directioned. So for the at drop side it's not so flexible and it is unconvenient for the customer to use. Then we move to the like uh, uh, colorless and directionless, use this kind of uh, whole WSS based technology. But there are some uh, wavelength blocking here because of the, there is one uh, fiber collection between these two back to back WSS. So the, 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 the wavelengths will be um, conflict. So then introduce the uh, uh, contentionless uh, technology. But this kind of a CDC rhythm use the uh, uh, fiber pigtails, massive numbers, ten, uh, hundreds of, or even uh, thousands of uh, fiber pigtails to collect all these kinds of uh, cards and ports by manually. So you can imagine that this is really a challenge for the uh, customer. So we introduced the uh, uh, optical back uh, backplane based uh, optical cross connect technology then to um, solve these kinds of uh, challenges and make the whole network to be uh, uh, autonomous from uh, automatic. So um, there are uh, uh, some, some, some key technologies about the uh, Org C. So uh, in, in the, before the Org C, uh, people developed a various kinds of technology like a wavelength blocker, so which is only to block the wavelength which is not used and it can only uh, apply in a two degree uh, node and then move to the PLC. But this kind of PLC is only uh, to deal with also two degree node. So in the like uh, 20 years ago, this kind of uh, modules can be uh, very good, but uh, if we move it, move, move it to uh, nowadays network, it cannot satisfy the high degree. But the WSS also has the, some problem on the uh, managing that uh, blocking things and also the reliability issues. So we introduced RxC. So uh, in principle, the RxC uh, is uh, made up by three parts. So one is the, uh, we call it a, a line, line part or line board. So this kind of uh, line board is function is to like a one by N uh, switches, but wavelength switches. So it can split and uh, 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 to choose uh, the design, the wanted uh, wavelengths to be switched to uh, the wanted uh, ports. And uh, optical, uh, uh, the, the tributary board. So this kind of board is uh, make the uh, M by N function. So that means it can uh, select uh, N uh, channels from uh, M, M ports or M degrees to the add drop module. And all this kind of two uh, function boards is connected by the uh, optical backplane. So uh, like electric electronic back, backplane, 
So the kind of a back plane uh, is totally uh, uh, high, uh, high, uh, highly in integrated, and it's, it's very uh, reliable and uh, uh, not uh, easy to to make uh, a broken or something like that. And uh, from the uh, module side, so we, we can see that uh, there are uh, three key technology about this arc C. So as mentioned that about the uh, uh, optical backplane. So in this uh, optical backplane, you will not see any uh, fiber pigtails. So it's uh, totally like uh, PCB, but we call it a uh, fiber uh, circuit printing technology. So a whole uh, uh, thousands of fibers just printed in uh, uh, one kind of paper sheet. So it's it, it, it very uh, uh, high integration and uh, high reliability and uh, to easy maintenance. So about the uh, adop site, we introduced the uh, Alcos liquid crystal silicon based uh, adop WSS. So this kind of uh, module is to change the whole network dramatically so that means that um, uh, there's no uh, contention uh, happened in this kind of uh, RxC system. And uh, also there's no uh, optical amplifier. So that means it is uh, high reliable and also uh, easy to, exp to, to, to make expanding for the uh, ad hoc ports. In the meantime, because we use the RxC, that means uh, almost uh, uh, all the uh, uh, information is in the optical domain. So there was, we need some way to monitor and to know exactly the performance or the states about each wavelength. So we introduced the digital optical OM uh, function. So we use some um, uh, specific technology like light sensor technology to know exactly uh, the wavelengths information like this uh, power and this uh, is destination and its collection link, uh, various information about this. So about the uh, optical backplane, so you will see here. So uh, I think the optical backplane, this concept is not new, but uh, this is the first time we introduce this kind of concept into a commercial uh, product. So uh, maybe uh, 10 or 20 years ago, um, in academic society, uh, people are talking about the uh, optical backplane, uh, more, more on the uh, how to print the uh, uh, waveguide or the fiber on the, on the, how to say, on the, on the paper side uh, board. But it's not just uh, to print the fiber, but how to uh, make this kind of very high dense uh, intercollection as you see here. There is a very high dense in the, uh, collect optical connectors uh, up to uh, 72 uh, ports and uh, with very uh, good uh, dust uh, proof tech, uh, uh, function here. So it is immune to like a PM uh, 2.5 level. And also we use non-contact connectors then to uh, make this uh, plug a function to be almost uh, endless. So there are a lot of uh, innovations on the material side. As here, I can give an example. So uh, all the, I think most of people know that um, um, if the uh, thermal uh, expansion is not coefficient with uh, about the fiber pigtail and the collector, so there there are uh, something uh, will be broken here. So how to find the material that can uh, satisfy the same uh, some experiment coefficient is very uh, important. So uh, our team to develop this kind of uh, specific material to use the, in the uh, optic connector and also the fiber tails. In the meantime, how to make uh, automatic uh, fiber uh, printing technology is also very important. So this is um, the key for the efficient manufacturing. So we uh, uh, collaborate with, with our, our industry partner uh, deeply to uh, 
to 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 invent this kind of uh, a big equipment to make this kind of uh, backplane into a real uh, commercial uh, industry society, right? So about the uh, ICOS based uh, ADWSS technology, um, this is uh, something uh, uh, very traditional space uh, optics uh, and uh, the uh, digital uh, optics. So why I call it uh, digital optics? Because we use the uh, liquid crystal technology. So this is a very interesting uh, component. Uh, so in traditional, for example, for the maps, we use a mirror to reflect and to make a uh, beam steering. But for the air course, we use something like a diffraction, not, not refraction, we use diffraction to, di to, to make the uh, beam steering. And this is not some uh, mechanical uh, movement, but we use the um, uh, electronic to driving the uh, phase changes in the liquid crystal. So there's no uh, mechanical parts. So that means it's, it is very reliable. And meantime, we use the uh, very, uh, uh, how to say, uh, very in innovative the algorithms to make this kind, we call it uh, hologram beam steering. So you can see here, there are some um, uh, diagram to show the phase pattern about the, uh, on the air course. So we use a different phase pattern to uh, make different uh, beam steering. That means we can, uh, to, to steering the whole uh, optic uh, sport on the on the, on almost on the on the on the whole uh, surface. That means we can increase the uh, switching ports like um, even uh, two times and even four times increase. So this is basic for the uh, oxy system. So uh, people may asking why we choose the liquid crystal silicon. There there are uh, like DLP and like a liquid crystal and like a MAM, so why I choose the liquid crystal silicon? So uh, in this table, you will see that uh, I think uh, the, 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 main, the main contribution about the liquid crystal, it, it means because uh, it introduced uh, uh, almost the grid list of properties about the optical switches. So this grid list, or we call it a flux grid function, make the optical layer can be almost uh, upgrade uh, uh, seamless with the uh, uh, transmission technology like from the 100G to 200G to 400G even for further uh, one terabit. So you, 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 no, no, you don't have to, to change the, or your uh, invest on the uh, optical uh, layer. So this is the main tech, uh, main co contribution, I think, to the uh, liquid crystal. And uh, compared to the maps, so because it, 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 there's no uh, moving parts, so it is very, its reliability is very high compared to the uh, maps. And I just mentioned before, so we, if all the, all the, uh, uh, information is on optical domain, how we can know uh, the the like healthy or the state about each wavelength. So we introduce the light sensing technology. We are adding some halotone to the uh, optical signal, and um, in the very uh, simple and uh, uh, zero cost way, then and detect almost everywhere in the network. So we can know exactly the uh, wavelengths where it is come from and uh, what's its destination, and what is the uh, wavelength number and uh, power and almost uh, OSR about this uh, uh, lambda. So this is very uh, important for the adapting network. And also this is, uh, uh, I think, the necessary uh, function about the OXY and networking. So uh, I think, uh, uh, because the OXY system is actually is highly integrated. So in the former one rack for one direction, but in the OXY system, so almost uh, uh, one card for one, for one dimension. And uh, uh, although we, we meantime, uh, with the uh, high integration, we also keep the 
high reliability. So you will see the uh, main parts about the oxy system. One is the uh, wavelength selective, uh, selective switches. And secondly, the, about the uh, eye drop part, and so is the optical backplane. So in every way, we uh, make some uh, innovations on each part and to make it with the same uh, reliability. So from optical backplane, so uh, the, the left side is uh, a traditional way. So you will see that people use uh, various uh, uh, fiber collection to collect <laughs> different uh, card, different ports. And because uh, this is uh, by, by manu manually, so uh, is, it is easy to make some mistakes. For example, the fiber cards or the loose fiber make a uh, high search loss, something like that. But if we introduce the optical backplane, all these things are gone. So that means this is automatically, all, almost all the things is automatically, and uh, we use the high uh, precision equipment to make this, this, all the things are precisely uh, under control and um, make the uh, whole system is very, very uh, reliable and uh, lower failure rate. And for the uh, uh, components parts, so also the left side is uh, tr traditional uh, multi-cost switch technology. So you will see here, there are a lot of uh, optical amplifier here. So you, we will know that the optical fire is a main uh, failure part about the network. So there, the MC, in the MCS solution, they integrate almost like uh, up to 16 or even more than that amplifiers here. So it's, it, the failure rate is very high. But in the ADWSS oxy technology, you will see here, there's no uh, pump nader here, there's no EDFA here. They, all the parts are passive. So that means it is more reliable. And also its insertion loss is lower than the MCS solution. So all these things make it better compared to the uh, MCS. And not just the, uh, to make a very uh, highly reliable uh, components. Uh, we also introduced the industry unique uh, test equipment and the uh, environment. So you will see here, there are some uh, thing unique in the industry, for example, for the uh, dust accumulation test chamber. So this is, uh, I think uh, there's no uh, other uh, solutions in the industry. So in this um, test chamber, we test all the kinds of uh, dust accumulation scenarios to make our uh, oxy uh, system can be working in uh, various uh, uh, conditions. And also we developing the no pressure test chamber. So we know that uh, in the uh, higher uh, uh, applications like uh, in some uh, high mountains, the pressure is lower. So there are some, uh, uh, the risk for the uh, pressure for 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 the for the leak leakage. So in this test chamber, we will know uh, to to guarantee and to make the uh, whole system is is uh, totally uh, hermetic. So for conclusion, so we used kind of full level protection for the uh, whole uh, reliability and stability from the component to the uh, system and the, to the network. So here are some uh, information about the uh, oxy in takeaway. So there are four advantages of oxy. Firstly, uh, huge capacity. So use the oxy, we can up to uh, 32 dimension and uh, one card for one dimension. And the whole ca capacity for the rack is can up to uh, 600 terabit. And the whole architecture can be uh, scaled out to one petabit. And there is no uh, fiber uh, uh, collection manually. All all the things is done in the back plane. So there's no uh, zero fiber collection, and means there's no uh, 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 errors introduced by the by manually. And also we introduced the industry uh, first uh, uh, CD, uh, ADWSS. This is make it uh, very uh, no insertion loss. Zero blocking function and also use some uh, digital OM uh, technology. 
to make the Namta can be can be digitalized and make Namta as a service to know exactly uh, it's 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 uh, healthy and uh, uh, it's uh, information. All right. Yeah, there's some uh, inf introduction about the uh, Oxy. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Could you please check the right of your screen? There is a poll button. You click the poll, then you will see the poll questions and the answers. Could you please select? Hi, Jonathan. Can you experience your opening about the poll result? Okay. So here I say uh, the, 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 the poll states. So uh, I think uh, most of the people think that uh, the oxy can be used in the back plane and uh, the metro core. I think uh, this is uh, something, uh, the same thing we think uh, what oxy can be applied. So in the back, in the, in the back plane, in the, the metro core, so uh, there are a lot of uh, data center and uh, more degree, more capacity needed in, in these two kinds of uh, network. So I think, uh, especially for the metro core, uh, its degree requirement, I think, is more in the backplane. So in the backplane, more like, uh, I would say, the, uh, the, the, the direct connection. But in the, in the metro core, I think the network is more uh, fully masked. Okay, so here are uh, some kids sharing from our customer. Okay, let's welcome Mr. Zhao Minghan from China Telecom. He will share with us OXA builds and optical cube to facilitate 3D backbone network. Hello, Mr. Zhao Minghan, are you there? Could you please start now? Okay, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Zhao Minghan. I'm the Senior Transmission Network Architect of China Telecom Sichuan. Today, I will show you the OXC commercial practice by China Telecom Sichuan. Why we need OXC, how we do, and what benefits can o OXC bring us? First, I will introduce you the company China Telecom and China Telecom Sichuan. China Telecom Group was established in September 2000. It's a very large communications company in China. It has been selected as the, as the world's top 500 in enterprises for many years. Mainly engaged in flex flexed the telephone, mobile communications, satellite, satellite communications, and uh, internet access and uh, application. As December 2019, it has uh, 300 million mobile phone users, 100 million flex phone and uh, broadband users, and more than 400,000 employees. Just as you know, Sichuan province is a place rich in products. It's a panda home and have so much delicious food, such as hot pot. China Telecom Sichuan is a branch company set up by China Telecom Group Corporation in Sichuan and undertakes general telecom service, public communications, and information service in the province. According to the plan of Sichuan province, from 2018 to 2020, more than 10,000 new in, in enterprises will be used cloud service as the largest IDC and cloud service provider in the province. China Telecom Sichuan owns the largest national level information industry, multi dimensional convergency platform in the West, China West Information Center, and is the first national data security center in the country. Okay, next, hello, next page. Uh, as everyone knows, 
uh, as everyone knows, many customers brings a lot of traffic and the network and the network of bandwidth requirements. As does Sichuan Telecom, in recent years, we have found that the current network is becoming increasingly difficult to meet the demands of business development. At the same time, the emergency of new services such as 4K and 5G brings great challenges to the network. First, due to the different usage habits of target users and the uneven distribution in the region, the traffic the traffic in different links of network is seriously uneven. In Sichuan Telecom, the average channel optimization rate is less than 30%, but the data of the core 11 links are more than 75%. Second, the network expansion cycle is now. The traditional network expansion method, expansion method uh, requires co coordina coordination of many resources, uh, such as uh, space, power supply, air conditioning, and, and the preparation of many materials, such as equipment, boards fibers and uh, cables. It also involves a large number of fiber connection and sites. If traditional Rodom solution expansion method is adopted, the construction per period is up to two months. In addition, the site res resources are also a problem. There are bottlenecks in space power supply and air conditioning of uh, multiple core, core node with uh, traditional solutions. One thing to emphasize is, emphasize is the uh, high reliability requirements. Just as you know, Sutra is, is a seismic zone between the Asia, Europe, and the India Ocean plant plants. In the past 19 years, six earthquakes of magnitude seven have occurred. So we need product must can resist uh, frequent earthquakes. Okay, ne next page, John. Page 28. Yeah, this is page 28. Uh, why we you why we choose OXC solution? The solution brings three benefits to us. First one, we use a three-dimensional backbone network architecture, and only need to expand uh, forty percent of high traffic sites to so solve the network capacity problem and save investment. The second. Based on OXC's highly in integrated platform, only one board needs to be expanded in one direct direction. At the same time, flexible scheduling of a service can be quickly completed through network management system, as well as uh, visualization of uh, network resources and uh, performance which can quickly achieve for demarcation dem uh, dem and uh, service uh, delivery, which greatly uh, accelerates the progress of uh, the project. And the, entire pro and the entire project was shortened shoot 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 uh, to two weeks short. In addition, the OXC solution using optical backplane technology greatly saves the room space, power terminals, and power consumption, 
we have calculated the compare with the compared with the traditional rhythm solution. The OXC solution can save uh, 25 kilowatt per hour a year in a year equivalent uh, to planting two, 2000 trees contributed to contribute to energy serving and uh, environmental protection in Sichuan of course the OXC solution reduces the fiber connection between sub Subrics and uh, greatly reduce the difficulty of um, maintenance. Maintenance. Last one. The equipment. Uh, the equipment has passed the earthquake intensity nine anti seismic per performance test. Can defend. Uh, can defend against nine magnitude earthquake. Based on the bar. We found that OXC solution can well meet the business development of Sichuan Telecom. Okay, that's all I want to share with you about OXC commercial practice by Sichuan Telecom. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, welcome to Hosei. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, hello okay. everybody, I'm Jose Manuel Silva. I'm in charge of the transport network technology team in Telefonica Spain. Uh, I've been working in this area for the last eight years and it's a pleasure for me to be part of this webinar. I would like to start giving my condolences to everyone that has a relative or friend affected by the virus. I hope that soon we will be able to go back to the office and, and see each other face to face. That will be good, good news for everyone. Uh, please, next page. Telefonic and Huawei have been co working together in transport networks for more than 12 years. And we deployed the national transport network, becoming one of the first ASON networks in the world. And since then, Huawei has, has been part of all the Telefonica transport network layers, including Core, Metro, and Access. 12 years is a very long time when, when we talk about technology evolution. And we have, we have seen networks changing from point to point to mesh topologies from one port per board to more than 20, and uh, from 100 G slot capacity to one tier. At the beginning of the National Transport Network, we deployed uh, 40 G non-coherent channels, and today we are thinking in, in the next network with 400 G channels, uh, and we are even thinking in 800 G and one tera channels for, for field trials. Everything is changing so fast, but we are not all interested in traffic growth, which is certain and uh, predictable for us. We need to look farther. In fact, one of our main goals today is to achieve a very high level of network automation in order to simplify and reduce the operation and maintenance tasks. And automation needs data. Every project we have in our minds related to automation starts with network data. We need access to every single data generated by the transport equipment and management systems. And this data should be in real time, reliable, and accessible through standard interfaces and formats. We hope all our vendors understand how important data is for our future. At this moment, uh, more than 40% of our team is working on automation projects, uh, and the whole company is going on that direction too. So I'm sure that, that Telefonica and Huawei working together will lead the path on network automation. Please, uh, next page. Uh, we have always tried to, to be ready for the future. And that's why last year Telefonica and Huawei started a, a new project called Innovation Lab. This new lab is designed to test all new features and, and equipment coming, even during the development stage when they are not available in the market yet. This lab uh, allows us to see and test how our future networks will be and gives Huawei the opportunity to receive feedback from one of their main customers when they still have uh, time to fix problems or improve some details. The Innovation Lab is also the first step towards the field trials uh, as a previous stage to, to the field scenario. In the Innovation Lab, we have already tested 200G channels, 400G channels, cluster configurations uh, and Raman amplification, for example. 
and of course uh, related to the topic of this webinar uh, the last equipment we were lucky to test was the, the optical cross connect the, the first time we heard about the huawei optical cross connect uh, i must confess that i was a uh, a little bit skeptic. This whole idea of the optical back panel and uh, reducing front fiber connections sounded like science fiction to me. But soon after, we had the opportunity to see the back panel in the Huawei headquarters in, in Madrid. Uh, I started to believe that it was something real. At the beginning of these years, and like I said before, we, we could test the optical cross connect in our innovation lab. Uh, we have made a very, very detailed and deep test just like all the tests we do on the equipment we deploy in our networks. We set up uh, an, a scenario with both P32 and P32C with all the boards available at the moment, uh, working together with the existing UPS flag plan. One, once we faced the lab configuration, we realized that the fiber connection reduction was obvious. Every internal collection is done through the panel. And that's a huge benefit in order to avoid operation accident and configuration mistakes. Using optical cross connect, uh, connecting one network element to another, deploying a, a new direction in a RODAM became very simple. We just have to plug one line board and all the internal connection between WSS and amplifiers are automatically created in the management system. It's a faster uh, and a safer process. Uh, of course, thanks to the high integration level, we are reducing space, which is also a, a goal for Telefonica, together with a power consumption reduction. And due to, see, to this integration, P32C is enough for most of our network elements, and we will need only uh, to use P32 in some special cases in, in the metro network uh, for network elements connected to many neighbors. Optical cross connect is also simplifying spare parts. Using this equipment, we will only need four or five different boards, uh, which are very easy to replace, re reducing bad configurations, like I said before. We have also seen features that Huawei need to improve in, in the future. For example, the perform performance of FlexGrid. FlexGrid is a must for the future, and all the functionality should be perfectly implemented like uh, they are in, in other Huawei products now. Uh, we, have, we have seen that flex read is not 100% well handled by control plane uh, in optical cross connect, but we are sure that, that these little bugs will be fixed soon based on the feedback uh, given by our testing. In conclusion, uh, optical cross corner test in our innovation lab was very successful. Uh, we have seen a, a product ready to the market and it was a very good surprise for all of the transport departments in, in, in Telefonica, from planning to maintenance people. We are really glad to, of how Huawei is working in innovation and Optical Cross Connect is a perfect example of that. Innovation is not only important for transponder, pluggables or, or modulations. Road and structure, space, power consumption, and automation are also very important. And we hope other vendors uh, work in that direction too. Of course, there are things that need to be improved. Uh, we also have to think uh, about how it fits in our network. But I look forward to seeing optical cross connect in our transport network. We will continue working together for, for many years in, in the innovation lab, in field trials, uh, of course, in, in the deployment of, of our transport network. Uh, I want to finish uh, my speech uh, thanking Huawei for giving me the, the opportunity to be part of this webinar uh, and share our ideas with so many colleagues. Okay, thank you, Hosai. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now we are going to pull questions, okay? Everyone can spend five minutes to make a choice. The poll, the poll questions is on the right side, right side of our screen. The question, the question is, what are the most expand benefits of use optic cross connect? Could you talk right. about uh, the poll results? Yeah, let me see uh, here. Uh, right. So I think uh, people uh, who select the uh, oxy, I think uh, more main for the uh, network automation and uh, 
also about the uh, switching uh, capability, and also can uh, lower the uh, total uh, uh, cost. Right. So in generally, I think uh, ArcC uh, can provide the, the highly integration. So I think uh, we can uh, provide uh, uh, very uh, cost efficient uh, solutions for the, our customer who is uh, need uh, high uh, uh, higher integration and. Uh, uh, for the Arc State, I think, because uh, uh, with with the coming about the 200G, 400G, and 800, or, 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 and uh, even uh, one terabit, uh, the, the switching capacity uh, will be, uh, become an issue in the electronic domain. So I think uh, in future, in the very near future, I think uh, optical switching will be uh, more and more important for the um, uh, site for the switching uh, capability because we will add more and more fiber in the network and more and more wavelengths in the network so i think uh, uh, it's also will become an, an important uh, issue in the future uh, wdm network thank you could you please uh, start now right so uh, here we also give some reasons on the uh, uh, Oxy. So in the future, we're not just uh, uh, not not only just to to increase the capacity about the higher node, but we also want to introduce the uh, um, um, mini Oxy in the like central office in a, a no node. So uh, in the future, maybe we can introduce some uh, very simple optics, free, uh, free space optics. Uh, in this kind of site and also introduce the uh, acidic and photonics into this kind of site to provide uh, more uh, cost efficient solutions uh, in this uh, lower degree site. And for the um, high degree uh, site, we will introduce like uh, uh, more than uh, 32 degree uh, uh, technologies and uh, in architecture, we can introduce some kind of a uh, scale out uh, architecture that we can almost provide up to 100 uh, degree uh, oxy for the future uh, high capacity uh, optical network. All right, so here's the conclusion. So uh, with the development development of uh, like a digital center and uh, video and uh, AR VR. I think uh, there are some um, uh, higher requirements on the network, uh, uh, like uh, uh, node dimension and uh, capacity, latency, and uh, like a uh, set degree, and uh, also driving the whole network to be a uh, pattern matched and uh, to become a three D dimension reconstruction. And the new generation of C, uh, based on the wavelength level switching. So it, it can uh, provide large cross connect capacity up to like um, uh, more than uh, 500 terabit and also provide the highest integration in, in the industry and the highest reliability in the industry. So I think uh, this uh, three uh, innovative technologies like uh, op optical backplane and the ARCOS based uh, switching uh, functions or, or modules and also the digital uh, optical OM functions can provide uh, our customer uh, network to be uh, uh, upgrading with the uh, requirement for the various uh, services. So in future, we will also look deeply into the uh, lower uh, metro uh, access uh, scenarios and also look up on the uh, optical back plane, uh, backbone uh, scenarios with higher dimensions to uh, make our customer network to be more strong. Okay.